There are three main reasons why player ATS can be flaky and let me show you some of those and how to fix it. So the reason number one is when the player tests run a little bit faster like ahead of state of your test application. And uh, let me show you the example of this use case and uh, how to manage this. So this is our test application pet clinic that I use at Bondor Academy for the practice assignment. What we're gonna do, we click on the pet types page, click on the edit button for the first pet, then we change it for example to the rabbit, click update and we expect that this pet have to be updated on this page. Pretty straightforward, right? So let me revert this back. And uh, I set up a quick playwright script for this with exactly the same steps. So we click on the pet types, we click on the edit button, then using method fill, we replacing the existing value with a new value, we click update button, and then we validating that the first input field has this value. But if I run this test, let's see what's gonna happen. So I running the test and uh, we see that this test is opening the browser and for some reason we see a cat value still displayed over here and we have a validation of the assertion. So Playwright was able to execute the fill rabbit, clicked update, but for some reason the value was not updated. Let's find out why. So I'm closing this and to find what actually happened, let me run this test in the Playwright runner. So we can see the snapshots before and after step, what actually happened in the browser, like in the slow motion. So I'm running exactly the same test. It's executing the steps. We have a validation failure. Uh, we see the cat over here and let's look on the other steps. So this is the step when we click on edit button. Looks fine, right? So we click over here. Uh, and before the step was empty and after the step and uh, so far it looks all right. So we typed the text rabbit, okay. Then we going back here, look action, the text is rabbit. We click on update button, right? Everything seems fine here. But if we click on after, why do we have cat over here? So we type the rabbit, we click update, why do we have cat over here and over here we have cat as well. So the problem here is that Playwright doesn't know that we want to replace the existing value. What it knows according to the script is that once it sees the input field it should type the value that we want and click the update button. That's it. Playwright doesn't know that we have API that is waiting for a call coming back with the value of the cat. And because of this asynchronous operation this problem happens in our script. So right here, once the playwright see the text field available on the page, it identifies, all right, I see this input field and immediately fills this value. But playwright doesn't know that there is an API call in the background that is still in the process of receiving the existing value of the pet with the name cat. And after we type the rabbit value, then the API call coming back to our application, replacing rabbit with the cat, and then we click in on update button and then the whole thing is messed up. So the right fix for this, you have two options. Option number one is to add a validation. It would be a locator assertion would be the right way to do. Uh, add a locator assertion with the value that you expect inside of the input field before we typing the value that replacing it. And this way we will synchronize the playwright script with the actual right state of our application. So let's do this. I type await and type expect and we need to get this locator and make sure that it have value of cat like this. So after we opening the page first we wait for the value that we want to replace to load into the input field then we replace this value and click update button and now everything should work fine. So let me run this test one more time. Running the test, rabbit type and now everything worked correctly. So the cat was replaced with a value rabbit. And right here we were waiting for 100 millisecond for the 
API to respond with the right value before typing the rabbit. We were using locator assertion. And if you don't know what is locator assertion and what's the difference between locator assertions or generic assertion, I will put the link in the description below to my previous video on my channel where I explain the difference between locator assertions and generic assertions. There is a pretty important difference though. If you don't have data like this, then you can wait for API response that is responsible for the desired state of your application. In this example, we can look into the networking tab, for example, and find this uh, get API call. It is uh, this one. Find this get API call that was responsible for returning the value of the cat, this guy. And we can wait for this API call to be completed before continuing our scenario right here. We can put a wait uh, page, wait for API response, wait for the response and put the URL. And in this case, we can remove this validation. It's gonna work the same way. So let me check the test data first of all. So we have rabbit let me change it back to cat update and then i am running my test one more time and it should pass as well so running the test application is waiting properly for the cat to be displayed and then we have a rabbit all right sounds good the second reason of the playwright test flakiness is when your application have a random delay of the some of the apis that your application is dependent on uh, how to identify it so let's say you run the test and every time your test crashing uh, with a timeout in different places so on the step two or on the step six then on the step five and so on you don't see any consistency and every time you hit the test timeout so most likely uh, your tests need more time to be executed than you have configured your test timeout. And that's why you see this issue. And most likely it happens because some of the API endpoints in your application, for some reason in that particular execution became slower and that delayed the entire test execution. How to find this API? So if I open the runner right here in here on the networking tab, so let me close this. So after the test execution, you see the history of your execution. You can click on this duration and filter all your API calls uh, by the time of the execution. And if you see any outliers in this list, so currently all of our API calls were within like, you know, half a second, which is fine. But sometimes you may see the outliers like 15 seconds or 20 seconds and something like this. Uh, and uh, when you check several executions and if you see that certain API sometimes is like significantly longer uh, than the other executions, then there is a flakiness right there. So what is the solution? The easiest solution would be just literally increase the uh, timeout for the test. The simplest way would be to add like this test.slow. You add this command and it will increase the default timeout that is configured in your configuration file uh, in three times. And then you run this test one more time uh, even if it takes like a lot of time and it's long execution, that's all right. Your uh, goal is just to validate was the reason uh, timeout or not. So if you use test slow, you run the test and it looks stable, then you can look how you can optimize this test. Uh, you need to look into that endpoint that you find which is unstable and think if you can mock this endpoint. Do you really have a big dependency on the data that is coming back from this endpoint or it can be mocked? I can tell you from my experience, once I automated test application uh, that had um, the API request that loaded a giant JSON file into browser local storage and it took like 30 or 40 seconds on every login to the application. It was just a simple static file that I had to manage. 
Of course, I didn't want to wait 30 seconds to load this file. So I just mock this endpoint, save this file locally in my project, and that worked super, super fast. So try it as slow, and if you find the slow and unstable API endpoints, think how you can mock it. And the reason number three is the locators, guys. Yes. So uh, Playwright support XPath locator, but if you still use XPath and Absolute Path and so on, that's the, also one of the reasons why your test can be flaky. Playwright uh, does not recommend using the XPath and, you know, long expression like this, or even if you use CSS selectors and you have multiple nodes in your CSX selectors, that can be a reason of the flakiness. The longer your selector, the flakier it will be eventually. So instead use user visible locators like get by role, get by title and so on. So in this test, we were using get by role. So the shorter your locator like this, the more stable it will gonna be. All right, I hope guys it was helpful. If you like this kind of content, put the likes and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.